it's Katie here with Life in the Mundane and welcome to my laundry room. Today I'm going to talk about how we organize and store all of our kids clothes and shoes and how you can do that too. So let's get started. So my goal when I first created this system was that I was tired of doing the monthly overhaul or seasonal overhaul of clothes, especially when they're babies and they're growing out of things every two to three months or more. I was tired of having to dump out their entire drawer and switch out everything back and forth. And oftentimes I found that depending on the size of the clothing item, it really varied. So sometimes my daughter would be wearing three and three to six month shirts. So we weren't ever fully in one size or the other. So we obviously have a lot of kiddos to keep track of their clothes that they've grown out of or they're getting ready to grow into. So I wanted to come up with a system that was easy to use and easy to cycle things in and out and kept it where I could keep track of what I did need and didn't need because I found myself overbuying for one child and not having enough for another child. So just kind of want to show you what we've been doing. So if you want to start a system similar to this, just a few basic supplies you're going to need. Sharpie, index cards, packing tape, some kind of container. We prefer clear because it makes it easy to see what sizes we have a lot of clothes of and what sizes we might need more of and also some kind of storage or shelving system. You don't have to have a shelving system. You can stack buckets on top of each other and we've done that in the past when budget didn't allow to buy shelving. But the problem we found with that is just the simple act of having to unstack all the boxes and stack them back up. We found that we didn't utilize the system as well and didn't drop things off in the correct bucket at that time. So we ended up with laundry baskets of stuff to pack away that never got packed. So this is sort of the way that we can get to anything and everything at any given point without having to unstack too much. What do you keep? What do you get rid of? And how much do you keep ahead of time? So we could very easily store clothes for years and have boxes and boxes and boxes. And I just chose not to live like that. Um, we've always had the philosophy that God has always provided what we need when we need it. So we don't want to hoard resources that we could be giving to others. Um, or just to have extra clutter around the house. So we try not to store up too far in advance. For instance, I have two boys as the oldest and then four girls coming after them. So because we don't have any boys below them, we only save the size they're in and about two sizes above. Um, then if we, and even then, even with the two sizes above, um, we have like an entire wardrobe of one size above and for the second size above, I maybe only save out things like pants because pants are super hard to find for boys that don't have holes in them or really ratty. So I like to have a bucket of pants or jackets or things like that um, for them and then we can just sort of build on that as we get closer to that size. For my girls, as you can see, this whole center section is for my girls and they um, obviously have more clothes, but part of because we have girls ranging from seven years old down to four months old, so we need a lot more options there and we do save the clothes in between since we know we'll have more girls going straight into it. So because of that, we do have each size for them. So we start with the newborn size over here and go all the way down to over on this one down to size six and seven. I try to save smaller buckets. This is a six to nine month bucket. It doesn't look like much, but when you're packing baby clothes, you can pack quite a bit in there. And honestly, this is probably more than we should have. But with baby clothes, it's never a bad idea to have extra. <laughs> to keep small totes on hand so that we are not keeping a bunch of excess that we don't need. And for the older girls, I do get slightly bigger totes for them. And that's just simply because their clothes don't fold and compact as well as they do when they're onesies or baby clothes. So I'm packed full, but sometimes it makes it hard to get into a smaller box. Um, for my boys, we have tried the idea of doing two smaller boxes, doing one for pants and one for tops or one for bottoms, one for tops, and that has worked well too. So we're kind of filling that out to see what works best, and I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments. Um, another big thing that we do beyond just storing our kids' clothes up here is we have themed boxes. So I don't know about you, if you've ever been to that point where you're going out the door to an event and you cannot find that super cute Christmas outfit or Fourth of July outfit that you bought for your child, 
at a garage sale the summer before. So this is how we solve that problem. We simply get some smaller boxes and label them with what, um, what they are and anything that's seasonal goes into that box. So let me show you. This has probably been the biggest lifesaver box so far, and that is having a swimsuit box. So we have the entire family swimsuits, not just the kids, in this one box. We also have any swim diapers that we have. We have them in here as well. The great thing about this is that typically I used to uh, put their swimsuits in with their summer clothing box when I packed away their summer clothes. And the problem I found is sometimes during the winter we would go on a trip and we'd stop at a hotel and want to have our swimsuits. This allows us to be able to find our swimsuits at any given point throughout the year. And again, we're not running into that issue of being ready to go to our friend's pool party or to the beach and not being able to find so-and-so's clothing. It also makes it great at the beginning of a season, right before the season starts, I can quickly go through and see who needs new swimsuits and who doesn't. This is our 4th of July and cow box. So in July, every July, Chick-fil-A does a cow appreciation day. So if you dress up as a cow, you get free chicken sandwiches. And if you know my family, we will do anything for free Chick-fil-A. So I have actually made them cow shirts and I keep them all in this box along with any 4th of July clothing any kind of flag clothing that's strictly 4th of July. So I keep that in the box all year long so when that week comes around, we've got it easy to find right here and I'm not digging to try and find. We can also recycle their cow shirts throughout the years. So I usually only have to make one or maybe two new ones because the younger kids can wear what the older kids wore the year before. Just like the 4th of July box, I also have my Christmas box. Um, as you can see, there's obviously a little bit more. I keep all sizes of Christmas clothes in here. So even if my kids aren't in, nobody's in a 2T um, Christmas dress right now, I still put it in here because then I have it to go through the years. I try to go through it at least once a year when I open that box just to make sure if there's any sizes that everybody has grown out of, I can just go ahead and give it away or get rid of it. But it keeps it all in one place. One of the other categories, I just posted a video on Wednesday about our field trip and how we have a field trip group. One of the things we do in our field trip group is we, all the families, wear one particular color. So our color is red. So we have red t-shirts for field trip days so that we can easily identify our kids quickly and all the different families have a different color. So I keep our field trip shirts in one box. So once a month when it's time for field trips, I don't have to hope and pray that the field trip t-shirts are clean and try to find them in their drawers. I can just hop over here and grab the box and hand everybody their t-shirt and it's easy to go. Another category that we just recently added um, is work and paint clothes. Oftentimes my kids want to jump in and help when daddy is working on a messy project or when they want to help paint and we just don't have, they'll go and they'll put on their nice clothes to try to go do it. So one of the ways that we've tried to cut down on that is as we find shirts that maybe get a little rattier, um, maybe it's an activity that they've done, a VBS, or um, a program that they've done where the shirts are just kind of worn out and, or maybe don't fit quite as well anymore, we just pop them in here and that way they're ready to go when they need any kind of grungy clothes for any work projects. So I also have shoe boxes and again, just small, small containers like this that has shoes. We have one for the younger girls, one for the older girls. For the boys, we typically only find shoes as we go because usually by the time boys are done with shoes, they are dead and you don't find too many used boy shoes. So when we find them, we do keep them, but um, we usually don't have enough to make a whole box out of them. Another thing we do is we like to, in order to save money on clothes for six kids, we like to consign some of our old stuff so that we can afford to buy what's new for the season. Um, so because of this, I have learned several tips and tricks to make it not so overwhelming when it comes to tagging and pricing items for consignment sales. If you're interested, I can do a video on that. Just comment below and let me know. But um, one of the ways that we kind of help with this process is by having a box on top of our dryer that's always ready to go for consignment items. So as I pull things out of the dryer, if a child has grown out of it, I can quickly either put it back in the box if it's something we're saving for a younger sibling, I can put it inside the consignment box if it's in nice enough shape to consign, 
or if it's just time for it to retire, then I can take care of it that way as well. So um, this gives us the ability to deal with things as we go right from the start and not having to make piles of goodwill or piles of consignment that never get dealt with or honestly tend to get circulated back into my laundry and give me more laundry to do. This though is we have a small box on top of our dryer for consignment. I put these items in there and then once that box fills, I stop and I price and tag everything and put it in our more permanent storage for consignment sales, which I can talk about later if you guys want to see, drop a comment below. So I hope you found that helpful and if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Give us a like, subscribe to our channel. Um, I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday on making the most of the little moments in home management, homeschooling and parenting and everything in between.